Welcome to my apiary. Good morning, everybody. It's it's not terribly early, but it's early enough. It's only about 10 C out here. Uh, it's rained a lot overnight. Uh, I know Ian was saying that it rained all day yesterday there, so I guess it just sort of moved this way and and uh, caught us all night. And I don't know if it might rain yet today. They're saying it might, but uh, it's foggy, and I've been kind of cooped up. I had a I had to babysit an internet installer yesterday, uh, so kind of wasted the whole day doing that. It's pretty stressful. These guys don't know anything, and try to not let them butcher up your house getting cables in and stuff. And they just want to bore holes in your roof and bore holes in your wall. And they're obviously not homeowners, you know. It just seems that way to me. So anyway, today, you know, nothing makes you feel like a farmer like uh, mending fence. <laughs> and I'm not mending fence so much. Uh, it's not broken. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm modifying fence. So what I'm going to do here is, I know you can't see the fence wires, but that's that's my gate over there. So the fence comes this this way. Oh, my terrible weather, man. And then it goes that way, goes all the way down across there. So what I thought was, if I made a little gate here, just right here, I'll put some spring handles on here. Then when I move bees, because my apiary is getting really full, there's 85 colonies here, and there's 64 more coming uh, before before winter. Uh, so I thought if I could just open this part, portion of the fence here, then I've got I've got 10 acres of hay field to load my truck. Lots of space. Little pile of trees here that I've been cutting down, but lots and lots of space there. Uh, so no more wedging the truck and trailer into the apiary to do that. I'll just move a couple of these pallets. I don't need much space. I need, you know, five, six feet uh, to get the tractor through. And uh, I'll just pick up the pick up the hives out there in the apiary, drive them out here, load them on the truck, or, you know, as the case may be this fall, take them off the truck, put them in the apiary. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here today. And I, uh, everything was in my truck, so I thought, well, I'll just bring the truck. And it makes a handy little uh, workbench for the tools. Uh, you see, I got a, a salt block here. I got a salt block here. I'll show you that. Um, it seems to me the bees are really like uh, foraging minerals. They pick through the mud a lot. And I had a, a tap at the house was uh, dripping uh, softened water. And boy, they're all over that. Uh, so when I was at the farm store getting fence supplies, they had a sale on salt blocks. So I bought one. All kinds of different kinds of salt blocks. And I have no idea what is what there i'm not a cattle farmer or anything um so let me show you that thing and maybe you can tell me what i bought so here's the said salt block for cattle horses sheep and goats they didn't have one for bees i noticed so this is the guaranteed analysis sodium chloride 93 percent so i guess it's mostly salt So anyway, I'll set that out here and maybe put a little bit of water in the cup and see if the bees like it. But for now, I need to get at this uh, fencing. So this is pretty easy. All I need to do is I need to take these insulators off. And yes, I've turned the fence off. That was job one today. <laughs> I mean, if you want to do this the hard way, you can leave the fence running. But job one is to take these insulators off and put these on because I have to deadhead the the fence line here and then my my handle connects to the fence there and then that hand that hook will hook into this eye when I close the gate. And because I have tensioning winches uh, upstream over there by the gate I have tensioning winches so I thought I would add uh, winches to uh, 
you know the downstream side here so I could keep that tight uh, you can only pull so hard against that spring in that handle but it's a uh, it's pretty robust spring if I do this right I may not really need those uh, but since you have to thread them in there I think I'll put them in regardless so anyway that's what I'm doing I'll uh, kind of let the camera run I guess I didn't bring my fancy power screwdriver so I have to do it the old-fashioned way you'd think those would be all rusty I wonder if I put stainless <laughs> screws in there they've been in there a number of years now Fencing pliers come in handy. Got all the different functions you need for fencing. Pulling staples, of course I don't use staples, but I, I bought them to pull staples because I was taking down a bunch of uh, barbed wire fence years ago. You know, you grab the staple in the end there and hammer the staple here, wire cutters here, pliers here. So it's pretty cool. I'll take that off for now. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to cut this wire and I need to cut it in such a way that I leave enough wire here uh, to wrap through that eye and twist it back. Uh, I do have some slack in the in the winch on the other end and uh, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna slack those winches right off give me all the slack I can here uh, and then I can wind it up again if it's if it's too loose because there's a quite a bit of lateral tension on it See, you see, got the rubber boots on. I've got long pants, so you know it's not a warm day. I'm always in shorts, as you know. I cut it it'll be the wrong place we all know that this one's gonna take off Norm is looking at me he's saying use that nice buck knife that I bought you and he's right but I don't I don't wear a belt so it's hard to just carry a pocket knife around like that I have this cheap little multi-tool in my truck. I've actually got one of these in each truck. They're affordable enough. 
and they usually get my butt out of a sling. Yeah, just uh, one of my one of my viewers I actually went to college with him. <laughs> it was over twenty years ago. It's twenty twenty five years actually now, Norm. We were in college together. And he uh, lives a long ways away. I haven't seen him in a long, long time. I haven't seen him since 1996. The guy's a computer genius. I'm just going to twist this like this. And, uh, yeah, a very generous guy. He, you see him commenting all the time on my videos. And he just sent me a really nice buck knife one time. And I told him it's too nice for me to actually take outside, and he kind of gave me shit about that. I have used it. Don't worry, Norm. I have used it. I use it to cut all the lids, all of the blanks out of the feed pails. The new feed pail lids that I bought had blanks under the, the screw top, so I use that. Very sharp knife, very robust. It's got a nice sized blade. It's not super small or anything. It's nice. Very nice. Very nice knife. It's very, very nice of him to buy that. Send it to me. So you can see that spring here. And I don't really know. Much a guy pinch in that. It feels pretty good. I think I'll just give it an iota more and then uh, just twist it around. This is probably not the right way either, but I've done this on every connection I have here and it seems to work just fine. I've never had one come apart. You gotta be careful though that little tail sticks up that grabs your clothes. Sometimes I'll take that tail and bend that back down toward the down toward the fence so it doesn't stick up and catch you. So that's a nice tension on that. It's probably every bit as tight as it was. Uh, and I said I was going to put a winch in that. I'm going to forgo the winches at this point. Another reason is the, the place I got the winches, the place I was buying all of my stuff, decided to never carry electric fence stuff anymore. And so the place that I had to go to had a different style winch, which is fine, except... There's a tool that you use to tension them. This just has a square, so, you know, a wrench or vice grips. Um, but the other kind, there's a tool. It's a fork thing that goes over here and locks into the cogs. So I'd like to be able to use one tool to tension my fences and not have to go and find two. What I might do is, you maybe can't see it, but there's a... A winch the other style on here on each corner um, so I could always swap these out and put the odd winch there uh, and put the you know the one that I have been using on there so yeah I think I'm gonna do without winches at this point that's pretty tight that's, that's nice I think that's every bit as tight as it was now, this, I don't think I'll have to, well, I might have to put this back. Put this away now. You can open knife sitting around, cut yourself. Now, you remember how I did that?
cattle guys can comment on my fencing prowess. Tell me if I'm doing it wrong. I'm not going to redo it. I don't care. It's uh, <laughs> I'm just kind of guy. I like to know what's the right way, and then I'll decide on my own compromises to make it work. Not very exciting, but that's what I'm doing today. We we'll start with my next projects are collect all my feed pails, put all my feed plugs in. I was at my one of my out yards yesterday, not yesterday, the day before, and I noticed that I didn't put my entrance reducers in. So I hope I haven't had any trouble over there as a result. After the feed pails are off, the entrance uh, reducers are in and the feed plugs are in, then the next job is moving beads. And that's why I need this gate. It's amazing how much wire I came up with here. If it wasn't tight, it was all laying on the ground in here. I could just cut it off. That's enough. You know what happens. You cut it off, you can't make it longer. No way you know how. I think that is going to work just perfectly. And I have options. I can open this gate for probably 50 feet here, uh, depending on where I want to drive in and out. So back in the big truck. Boy, I love this big truck. This one ton, diesel one ton. Such a beautiful engine to run. It's coming six cylinder. And uh, it just really pulls and hauls. Does more than everything I need. I'm trying to get this. Uh, this is the aforementioned buck knife. Okay. Buck. And I'm doing one hand, but so this is the buck knife I was talking about. Norman got this for me. What a nice guy, eh? I don't know if I dare open it up with one hand. I'll try. Oh, I cut my leg off. No, I didn't. So look at that. Look at that beautiful knife. It's just a, a work of art. It's a master of engineering. American made, you know. They, they take pride in their products. And, you know, you, you pay for it. I know what that, that knife costs. And it's not a cheap knife. And the good news is it's not a cheap knife. So I'll try to do it back up. You have to, if you don't know that these knives... You have to squeeze this lock to to release the blade it's it's locked when it's open it doesn't retract unexpectedly so there it is close that up so thanks Norman that's a that's a beautiful gift right there Wasn't that last year it was around Christmas I think it was last year. He got that for me. 